This video is intended for people who either aren't familiar with the pen tool inside Illustrator or just new to Illustrator in general. If you're a really advanced user, this might be a little bit basic for you, but I'm going to try to start at the very beginning of how to use the pen tool and then go through some more advanced techniques. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you just have a stroke selected. As you can see right here in my window, my stroke is set to black. It doesn't really matter what color you have, but under the fill, just make sure there's nothing in there. And to do that, just hit this little none box. It looks like a white square with a red line going through it. And the reason for that is I have this simple shape drawn right here. If I apply a fill to it, you can tell that it automatically fills in the gap with this straight black line here. And that can get a little bit confusing when you're drawing something. So I like to just work without a fill and then put my fill in once I'm done drawing a particular object. So the pen tool is right here on your toolbar and it's P as a keyboard shortcut by default. And then you can click down and hold on the pen tool to see the add anchor point tool, delete anchor point tool, and convert anchor point tool. You can also see there's an arrow pointing right. If you click that, it'll pull this into its own new window with these different tools. The plus sign is the add anchor point and the subtract sign is delete anchor point tool. And this little V shape right here is the convert anchor point tool. So just have the pen tool selected. And once again, it's P on your keyboard. And basically wherever you click is where it will draw the shape. So I'm gonna draw a very simple shape right here, just a quick box. And as you move the pen tool over different lines, you can tell that a plus sign appears. So if you look at this little pen icon, there's a plus sign. If you hit on that line, it'll add a new point. So if I were to hit A to select the direct selection tool, it looks like the white arrow on your toolbar. And then I would just drag over that particular point that I just created. I can then move and manipulate this particular point. Then if I take my pen tool and hover over a point that already exists, you can tell the pen tool has a little subtract sign next to it. So if I hit that, it'll actually remove that point. So that's a really quick way to go in and manipulate various points. The convert anchor point tool adds a whole new range of things because it works with Bezier curves. So if I were to select a point with the convert anchor point tool and start to drag, I'm holding and dragging, you can tell that it starts to make Bezier curves just like this. And it's a very quick and easy way to give whatever shape you're working with an organic look. So very quickly there, I turned a box into a very wavy shape right here. You can also accomplish this when you're actually drawing. So I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard to go back to the pen tool. And this time when you make a point, click and hold. And when you click and hold, you can tell that you can actually make the curves just like this. So you can go ahead and draw curves. It'll make the shape that you finished on. And then if you try to click again, you can tell that it automatically starts to draw another curve that intersects with the curve you previously made. What I personally tend to do is I usually click on the last point I made, which stops it from automatically generating a new curve. So that way when I go in and make a new curve, I can finally tune to exactly what I want because if I don't do that and I just click, you can tell that it kind of reshapes. If I try to go up, for example, it automatically makes that bending curve. If you know you want the line to flow perfectly from what you just drew, you can go ahead and let it automatically make that line. But if you want more control, just click on that particular point. And when you do that, it removes the little adjustment line like this. And that way your next point will be a straight line from wherever you last clicked it. And also something to note on these, if I use the direct selection tool, which is the white arrow, A as a keyboard shortcut by default, and then I highlight over one of these curves, I can manipulate this point by clicking on this red trailer right here that looks like a line with a little circle at the end. You can make fine-tune adjustments by just clicking and holding on these and then readjusting your lines as you see fit. And at any point, you can just hit P on your keyboard, find the last point that you happen to make, and then hit it, and then it will start your path all over again. Now when you're ready to close up your shape so you could add a fill, you'll see that the pen tool now has a little circle. And that little circle next to the pen tool means that you're going to complete the shape. So go ahead and click that. And then the shape is basically ready to have a fill applied to it. So at this point, we can add a fill of our choice. I'll make it a somewhat blue color here. And it's a nice, complete, closed shape. If I were to cut out a section right here, just to quickly show a little issue, if you don't close the shape, if you start moving these around, you can tell that it doesn't properly close. And therefore, the fill will kind of automatically complete between whatever two points it has to work from. So that's why I tend to not add the fill until the end. Also, when you're working with these shapes, you can change the actual thickness of the line at any time by going to Window and then Stroke. And from that window under Weight, you can just adjust this as you see fit to make the lines as thin or as big as you want. And also, if you look at these points, like for example, this point right here is at a hard 90 degree edge. If you want to make this a soft rounded corner, under Cap and Corner, you just want to make the corner from the default selection right here, which is Miter Join and then you want to select round join. Once you select that, you can tell this corner now has a softer edge, as well as this corner now has a nice soft edge. If I go back to miter join, you can tell it's a 90 degree curve. And let's say you're just drawing a line. You can tell this particular line has hard edges on the sides right here. If you want to have soft edges and you're just doing a line and not a completed shape, go up to cap, and then you can select round cap. 
so that way your shape that you're drawing with the pen tool now has nice rounded corners that you would expect with a drawing or illustration as opposed to the hard edges of a miter join like you see right here that's more of a box. It's kind of a personal preference thing for whatever you're trying to accomplish with the style that you're illustrating or drawing. And as a way to learn how to do this a bit better, I have a Nike swoosh logo right here and not for the purpose of showing off the Nike logo, but it's a great way to practice. If you have a particular shape that has nice flowing curves, much like the Nike swoosh does, you can start practicing how to replicate these corners with the pen tool and just making fine tune adjustments until you get the points looking the way you want them to. And it's always important to note that you want the path of these curves to kind of go along the line that you're trying to go to next. So I kind of made this line up with this swoosh that goes up like this. So that way when I make my next point, it's in line and should look pretty good. Just spend the time practicing, maybe tracing over a few things, and then work your way up to more difficult shapes as you keep advancing. If you ever have problems maintaining a specific corner or edge, try to make more steps. You know, if you have to make your curve in two or three segments instead of one or two, do that and that way you'll have a little bit more fine-tuned adjustment. And also, if you zoom in on this corner right here, you can tell this particular edge is a little bit rough. So oftentimes I like to zoom in a lot. It's pretty common for me to work at 3200% or 6400%, so I can really zoom in here and then using my direct selection tool, I can finely tune these edges until they become the nice soft flowing edges that I'm trying to accomplish. That's the really cool thing about Illustrator in general is that you can zoom in really close and become very, very careful about how you choose to make your shape look. So once you're done, you have a nice shape. In this case, it's a Nike swoosh logo, but it's whatever you're trying to accomplish. I can make the corner a nice rounded corner so we have soft edges, apply a fill to it like we did before, and we're ready to go. So just practice around quite a bit. If you have any questions about the pen tool, feel free to ask in the comments section. It's a fairly basic tool in the way you can use it, but if you really master it, it's extremely powerful. Like you can make or draw pretty much anything you can imagine with the pen tool inside Illustrator. It is the tool that I would recommend above pretty much anything else I can think of in this particular program. It's just crazy powerful and the amount of versatility that it gives you when you're working. So if this video is helpful to you, please like and favorite. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. I do my best to create tutorials and offer design information just like this every week. Thanks for watching.